Good question from folks from time to time. Question I ask myself sometimes is, why do I add, drop, or change manufacturers? Well, there's a lot of reasons, really, you know, and uh, we try to cover them from time to time when uh, there's a significant one that either comes into the fold or drops out of the fold, right? And I think the reasons for adding new manufacturers are typically pretty straightforward, right? So for me as a dealer, number one, I want really good pricing uh, for myself, but then that translates to really good pricing for you guys as well, for my customers. But it doesn't, I, I, I'm not only focused on price, right? I, I don't necessarily care about being the cheapest. Um, I, for me, the cheapest has a negative connotation with it because if you are the cheapest, doesn't matter the industry or the product you're selling, you have to cut corners somewhere. And that can be with uh, the materials, right? Whether they're just in inferior, like on the grade or the quality level, um, or maybe they're just thinner, right? Maybe it's a, a thinner metal on there, right? That's not gonna last as long, a thinner gauge steel that's not gonna be as durable on a brush hog or something. Um, could be poor welds or, or just the weight bolt together versus, versus welded together. Country of origin is another one. Um, I've got a few question marks out there on some manufacturers and I would hope that the consumer is wise enough to understand that if a price seems too good to be true uh, for what they're advertising and maybe where it's made, they say they're made in the USA, but the price lines up with a Chinese product. Um, well, where there's smoke, there's fire. This is, you know, hopefully this stuff, I, I think everything works itself out in the in the one way or shape or form, but I get asked to, you know, why don't you work with certain companies a lot? And sometimes companies don't want to work with me. I don't know why. But there's other times where I don't have a good feeling about companies either, and I don't want to work with them uh, for certain certain reasons. So of course, you know, there's more that goes into it as well. There's holes that are in my lineup of equipment that I offer too. Right? You know, there's there's certain products that I don't carry, or there's certain products that I think are good. But if I can find what's a better solution that I didn't know existed, then I'm gonna you know, kind of vet that and validate that product and, and give it a shot and see if it resonates, right? I think most of the time I'm, I'm pretty good at picking and selecting products that you guys want that would be beneficial for you that meet kind of my own criteria of pricing, uh, quality, and features on there. Uh, every once in a while I miss the mark, but it's also sometimes fun to show new products that maybe are a little bit more specialized, um, or maybe they are for a commercial user versus just a residential user and kind of just, you know, spread the coverage out a little bit more that way too. Um, and so those are some of the reasons that I bring new manufacturers into the fold. But every once in a while, I need to get rid of a manufacturer, right? And, uh, you know, it would kind of tie on to that if I find something better, right? Not that I, I don't ever like to think I've carried something bad. Um, but if I do find something that is, wow, came out of the woodwork and it's I didn't know about them or they're a new manufacturer or they're a manufacturer that came out with a new product or something else and I'm going to give them a shot. But sometimes things run their course and that can be for quite a few different reasons. You know, my business is a little bit unique. It's kind of a hybrid model where I do stock and direct ship all sorts of attachments to folks all over the country. We have a huge warehouse, well, big for us, and we put things on pallets and ship them LTL or UPS ground, depending on what it is. Other products and manufacturers that we work with are kind of comfortable uh, drop shipping for us. And so we'll do that with those that it works out. And some others are affiliate partners where I don't have to stock anything. I don't have to be involved in the sale. It goes directly through that manufacturer and, and their website or their salesmen. Um, you enter a discount code. And then basically my commission is what I get, what I earn for advertising for a product that I believe in. And then you guys handle the transaction right through them. And bear in mind that you know, I am fairly lenient with, well, I'm, I'm a realist, right? I understand that things don't go perfectly all the time with companies and don't go perfectly all the time with me either. Okay, so the reasons why I drop a manufacturer, and I think as business owners, you guys can relate to this too in your, um, in your own respective companies. And maybe if you are thinking about getting into business, keep this kind of in, in the back of your head too. Uh, when you get into a relationship with some um, other partner of yours, well, everything has a lifespan and some of those um, journeys last longer than others and that's okay, that's just how it goes. Every business is gonna be different. Those people you're working with are their own business and they're gonna operate differently and maybe as you spend a couple of years with them, you realize they're not the right partner for one reason or another. And um, several of the companies that I've done business with in the past make great products 
and I dropped them because of other factors. And number one is really poor communication. And, uh, you know, it's easy up front to establish a relationship. You get really excited about that and want to nurture that and, and, and grow it and, and keep a good thing going. But at some point, there's complacency that starts to come into play. And, um, you know, I feel I've been backburnered. So when I have to contact somebody multiple times, or if I contact them and it takes days to get an answer back, either one of those are just poor communication and that's just bad business. That's not the way to, I'm a customer at that point, right? Maybe not just a retail end user customer buying one thing, but I'm buying on volume or I'm selling on volume. And uh, you would think that's even more important, you know, as it's a bigger part of their business, but it's surprising how many companies out there don't take that seriously. And that's just not how I do things. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. You know, another, uh, well, especially this, last couple of years, another common factor is going to be price increases, which essentially drive uh, certain companies to be non-competitive. They just no longer, I mean, what was a good value, which again, doesn't mean they were the cheapest, but it meant that for what they're providing, their quality level, the features of their product and the price point all aligned to what I think made a really good value is no longer there. Or it's too close in a price point to something else that's on the market where I can no longer make a, a business case for it. It's just not practical to do so. And I can't in good conscience do that with my customers either. And so in a situation like that, it just kind of drifts away. You know, there's no, there's no animosity or hard feelings, so to speak. It's just the writing's on the wall. At the end of the day, business comes down to numbers and you have to be profitable. And if you, um, your prices are so high that you can no longer even sell the product, well, <laughs> there's no profit there that way either. So, um, that's happened to me on a couple of occasions as well. And I don't make, I don't make videos and this isn't about calling out specific manufacturers, but if you saw something, I don't know, years ago that was on my website or in a video and you can no longer find it, well, just know it most likely lumps into one of these categories of it's just not a good fit. It's not something that I uh, believe in enough anymore to represent. So a couple um, happen to be affiliate partners, you know, and so that's where a real element of trust comes into play. For me, I, every video that we put out costs a lot of money to make. There's a lot of production costs that goes into it. The guy behind the camera right there makes, that guy right there makes a pretty good living, um, but he's really skilled at what he does. But there's, there's my time, right, that's involved. There's um, one of limited slots that I can make for YouTube, right? We, we put out three videos a week right now. And so it's using one of those available marketing slots for me. Um, time invested on the website, you know, all these links, all this promotion that goes on for a company, a, a partner that I work with, we call it the discount club. And that's on good faith that I am going to have a return on that. So I'm, I'm starting out in the hole on that with all this cost that goes into it up front. but it's my belief that I'm going to get recoup that cost, you know, and then of course, well beyond that with time. So I've had a, a couple partners where it's been more than one of these negative things we're talking about has come into play. And when I have to ask to be paid <laughs> what, I, what I've earned, my, my commission, it's just like drawing a paycheck, right? It's for you guys that work strictly, strictly on commission. It's, you know, that, that same kind of concept. I mean, having to ask to be paid more than once is, is just super annoying and, and unprofessional to have to ask that, right? And, you know, there's been multiple times with a couple of these vendors that I did a lot of business with, a lot. They were very successful, actually. They just they would say that they're going to pay me and they never would. And then they'd say they'd pay me again. Apologize. It's excuse after excuse after excuse. And they, they wouldn't. And there's been enough there. I've got a couple other companies that are like that right now too. And, uh, they're, they're kind of, you know, burning that bridge. Um, and so it's, again, it's a big commitment and, and a trust issue for me. And it's not that they don't have good products. I, all these companies have really good products that I work with. And it's not the product side of it, but there's more than just a product that makes a business and a successful business and, and partnership. And um, that's what a lot of these folks don't understand. And I, you know, with rare exception, that I think is more of a um, consumer beware 
type thing, I, I'm going to leave their name out of it. But if there's something that I think is uh, worth mentioning for you guys to avoid from a product sense, then I'll let you know. But this is more of a business partnership sense where you're not going to see me representing them anymore because the other parts of their business just, you know, just crumble apart. And now we have mentioned, though, before companies, one company in particular, that their quality really, really suffered. And this happened through the pandemic, and I don't know if it's recovered or not. Um, frankly, I don't care. It, it was enough where their quality went off the deep end. Uh, there's so many fitment issues and, and just weld up issues that things were crooked or misaligned. It, it was just poor. It was just poor all around. And for me, that was like a 5% rate, which is way too high to have, to have issues. So still, 95% or more of their product was good, you know, but if you have 5% of products, especially when you're shipping them out to customers that show up there and they have problems and you have to give that back, I mean, that's not a cheap, that's not a cheap fix. There's nothing cheap about that. It's very inconvenient to do so. And uh, when a manufacturer won't even talk to me directly, I have to go through a distributor and, and just kind of get in the, the runaround. The writing's on the wall, you know, and so I'm not afraid to drop a manufacturer when that happens. And it's uh, it's kind of crazy how that goes from good to bad in one season, but it can happen. You know, and so we recently went to uh, the National Farm Machinery Show down in Louisville, which was my first time going there. Um, I would have liked to have gone in the past, but it's hard for me to get away. I mean, I, I do run the day-to-day -day stuff that goes on at the shop and um, keeping up with the emails and that kind of thing is, is a challenge in and of itself. And so not being able to sit down in front of my computer for days on end is a challenge, but it was fun to see all the different manufacturers that are out there. So many brands you haven't heard of. Um, crazy how many skid steer brand attachment manufacturers are out there. It's just nuts. But uh, we got to see some cool new stuff, may have some new relationships that, that grow out of that. And so time will tell, but it just shows you how there's always innovation that's out there. There's new things always coming, whether it is the same manufacturer making a a tweak and improving a product or a brand new product or a new company that's coming out and establishing themselves. And I, basically I think it just proves the point that the only thing constant is change, right? You can guarantee that things are gonna change always, whether you think they're going to or not. If you sit there and do nothing, well, you're gonna fade away. I mean, you have to keep up with the change and some change is good, some change is bad. So it's up to you to decide and, and kind of sift through that and, and see what's good and bad there for yourself. But that's kind of what this is all about, right? There's always going to be new things that are going on with my company and going on with your company, uh, whether you own it or whether you work at it, right? This, it's just inevitable. And that's one of the, that's one of the funny things I think I took away from the farm show is, you know, we talked to a lot of uh, different companies down there is how many of those brands still do things the old school way in the ag world, where it's all with a local dealer selling to their local little, I don't know, 20, 50 mile area that they're in. And they don't grasp the reality that you can sell things online and ship them to your house. <laughs> and those companies I fear are going to just drift away and fade away and be taken out because they're not catching on with the times that have been around for two decades now where you can buy online and have it get shipped right to you. Great products, but they're going about it the wrong way. So. At the end of the day, my interests align with yours because I need a good price point to be able to pass along a good price point. I don't want issues because if I have issues or if you have issues, well, I don't want you to have issues. Let's put it that way because if you have issues, then I'm going to have issues. If you don't like the features that are in a product, then I'm not going to be able to sell the product to you because you don't want it. And so all of my interests have to align with yours. And yes, I am trying to sell a product, but I don't have to sell a certain brand because I am tied under a, a, an affiliate. Well, let's put it this way. I don't have to sell Frontier attachments because I'm not a John Deere dealer. I don't have to sell Lampard attachments because I'm not a Kubota dealer. I have the opportunity to sell whatever attachments I want to out there to work with manufacturers. And again, not every manufacturer wants to work with me, but I can cherry pick the good stuff. And there's, well, HLA is a good example. They have pages and pages and pages, or WorkSaver, pages of products that they sell. And I cherry pick the small handful that I think represent the good value, you know, that are, that are having the pricing, the features, and the quality. So really, that's just a little look into how the business works. And I think 
hopefully to make you more confident in what I am representing on my website. And if there is a quality issue, I'll call it out, right? But if it's, if it's something that's, you know, most of the products I've ever sold are high quality. That's not the issue that I would drop somebody. It's more because I think there's perhaps now a better value or again, they've become uncompetitive or just bad communication or I'm not getting paid, <laughs> you know, so that kind of thing. Um, but that's part of the risk of owning a business and with greater risk comes greater reward. And I love working for myself and figuring this kind of thing out. And I'm okay taking the risk. I like to take risk as long as it's calculated and informed. And the more I do this, the better at it I become. And so I think the better value for you I can provide. So if you enjoyed today's video, we would love to have you tag along. Hit subscribe right down below. And of course we do sell tractor attachments. So check out goodworkstractors.com. We have free shipping, rewards, and financing too. I wanna to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.